Hi and welcome again to this series of videos on structural dynamics. We have seen that resonance is probably one of the most dangerous phenomena for structures which are uh, subjected to dynamic excitation. So one of the ways to uh, reduce this problem is to add damping and there is a video detailing how to do that with material damping. But another way which will be described in this video is to add a tuned vibration absorber. So to understand how this type of system works, first we will detail the working principle of an undamped tune mass damper. So to understand the principle of tune mass damper, let us consider this large mass M, which is our primary system, which rests on a spring and a damper and this system is perturbated by a force here. So in, an, in, in order to decrease the vibration of the system we want to add a secondary system which is made of a small mass, a small stiffness and a small dashpot and called a tuned mass damper. We introduce different uh, parameters. The first one is the mass ratio, so the ratio between the mass of the TMD and the primary system. We also have the frequency, the natural frequency of the tuned mass damper, square root of k over m, the natural frequency of the primary system, square root of capital K over m, and the ratio of the two nu omega n uh, divided by capital omega. The equations of motions are written below, so we have the vector of unknowns to displacement x1, x2 of the primary system and the secondary systems and the velocities and acceleration. We have here the mass matrix which contains the two masses, the damping matrix which contains the two dampers, and the stiffness matrix which contains the two stiffnesses. Here is the force acting on the first mass. If we assume harmonic excitations, this is the equations of motion, and now we want to solve for the displacement x1 of the primary system, what is this displacement as a function of the frequency? So this is uh, the equation and we will first look at what happens if we use an undamped vibration absorber which means that small b is equal to zero. You see that then on the numerator you have k minus omega square m. So the idea is that we have x1 equal to zero if omega, the frequency of excitation, is equal to square root of, uh, of k over m, so is equal to the natural frequency of the tuned vibration absorber. Now, if we choose this natural frequency of the tuned mass damper equal to the natural frequency of the primary system, then you can cancel the vibration of the primary system at its natural frequency. So this is represented on this graph, where we plot x1 over f as a function of the frequency. Without tuned mass damper, the primary system has a resonance at capital omega 1. When you add the undamped tuned mass damper, you see that you can cancel the vibration at this frequency, but that because you are adding a second mass, you have now two resonances, which are now to the left and to the right of the primary system. This is an example where the mass ratio is 3%, and the frequency ratio is equal to 1, which means that the frequency of the TMD is the same as the frequency of the uh, primary system. Now, of course, um, the advantage is that it reduces the vibration, but only in a narrow uh, band around the eigenfrequency, because outside this band, you see that in these regions you have amplification. A second, a second common way to uh, damp the vibration of a primary system with a tuned absorber is to use a uh, pendulum. So um, the motion of the primary system is given by x and the motion of the pendulum is here given by the parameter theta. If we assume that theta is small, this is the equations of motions, 
and we can define omega n as the natural frequency of the pendulum which is as it is well known square root of g over l where g is the constant of gravity omega capital omega is the natural frequency of the primary system and we also define the, uh, uh, fre the, the frequency ratio nu and the mass ratio mu as before this is then the equations of motion you see that now the coupling between the equations is on the mass matrix and not anymore on the stiffness matrix this is the equations of motions under harmonic excitation and again we can solve for the displacement of the primary system x uh, divided by f and we get the following expression which shows that it is equal to zero the displacement of the primary system is zero for a frequency equal to square root of g over l so equal to the natural frequency of the pendulum so again we can choose to have the natural frequency of this pendulum equal to the natural frequency of the primary system and tuning of this frequency is done by changing the length of the pendulum as g cannot be changed on earth if we do that we will cancel the vibration at the natural frequency of the system and if we change the mass of the pendulum we will not affect the natural frequency which is not a function of the mass but we will change the spreading of the peaks so the highest the mass uh, the more spreading we will have an undamped TMD will have a narrow band effect which means that it will reduce the level of vibrations at the resonant but it will increase it actually outside uh, of this band so in order to have a, a wider effect so it means to damp all the frequencies around the resonance what can be done is to use a damped tuned vibration absorber so when we are adding a damper in our tuned mass damper uh, we will have the following effect the two peaks on the left and on the right will start to decrease until they reach an optimum if you still increase uh, the damping after you will see one peak reappearing and with quite low damping this is due to the fact that if you have a very large damper here these two masses will be uh, in a way glued together and so you will have the same as the initial system but with a lower natural frequency because you are adding um, a mass now note that the reduction of the vibration at the natural frequency is lower when b, b is increasing but at the same time the amplification outside this very narrow frequency band is um, reduced note also the existence of two points that we will call p and q where all the curves with different values of damping cross in 1954 Denartok proposed uh, a way to, to tune optimally the damper by trying to set points P and Q at the same height and finding the optimal B which would make the curve be maximum at points P and Q so he found analytically that to have P and Q at the same height you have to have a ratio of frequency of 1 over 1 plus mu so it is not exactly the same natural frequency but as the mass ratio is usually small for a device that you add this is close to one he also found the, the optimum damping which is given by xi is uh, square root of 3 mu divided by 8 times 1 plus mu so it is also a function of the mass ratio and once you have xi you can find optimum b given by the following expression so in summary if you want to design a tuned mass damper usually you will ha f first have to decide what is the maximum acceptable uh, mass ratio so this is typically a few percent as you don't want the secondary device to weigh as much as the primary device based on this value uh, you can find the, 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 the optimum frequency ratio nu given by 1 over 1 plus mu which will put these points p and q at the same height and um, this allows you then to compute the stiffness of the TMD as you already have the mass m which is given by the following expression so it is uh, it can also be expressed as a function of the stiffness of the primary system and the mass ratio 
Finally, the optimal damping is computed, also based on the mass ratio, to find B. Note that in the case of base excitation, such as, for example, earthquakes, the uh, optimum is not exactly the same. The goal here is not to minimize the absolute displacement x1, but it is to minimize the relative displacement with respect to the ground, to have the lowest strain energy in the primary system. And this is divided by the uh, base acceleration, so minus omega square x0, uh, for example, in the case of an earthquake. In this case, one can show that the frequency ratio, the optimum frequency ratio to have P and Q at the same height is slightly different than in the previous case, and so is the optimum damping. Those have been divided by Warburton in 1982. In this case of uh, pendulum tuned mat damper, uh, um, a damper can also be used, and we can also reach the same type of optimum with P and Q at the same height using uh, an analogy uh, recently developed. So using that you can, same, you can use exactly the same analytical expressions to uh, derive the optimal parameters of your PTMD. So the very simple model that we just discussed here considers uh, a structure in the form of a one degree of freedom system to which the TMD is, is uh, attached. But as engineers, of course, we are dealing with real structures. So here we're going to detail how to tune uh, a, a TMD for any type of uh, complex structure. A tuned mass damper or TMD is a simple passive device that can eliminate undesirable motion due to resonant vibration within a mechanical structure. Typically, the TMD is attached to a point on the structure where the vibration-induced displacements are the largest. In this case, we have attached the TMD to the end of the cantilevered aluminum beam. To observe the undamped response of the beam, the action of the TMD is negated by the use of a small rubber block or stopper. This effectively turns the TMD off. When the rubber stopper is removed, the TMD is allowed to function. When the aluminum beam is struck by the hammer with the TMD turned off, the excitation of the beam's first bending mode and the resulting vibration can easily be observed dying out very slowly. With the TMD activated, the vibration is highly damped and the motion dies out in two to three cycles. Highly effective magnetic TMDs have become practical with the development and widespread availability of rare earth magnetic materials. This particular magnetic TMD was designed to eliminate an oscillation in the vertical tail structure of a fighter aircraft. Under certain airflow situations, turbulence was inducing undesirable vibration levels. The magnetic TMD highlighted in the video was shown to significantly mitigate structural resonance effects with only a very modest weight penalty. TMDs are available in a wide range of configurations, from the small hockey puck size TMDs, similar to those shown in the photograph here, to large TMDs for civil infrastructure applications, which may be literally the size of a two-story building. Today, TMDs are being used for aircraft, machinery, optical systems, mass transit, and even vibration suppression on power lines. The previous video showed examples of so-called magnetic TMDs. They are referred to magnetic because the damping is uh, a magnetic damping. Now, in order to attach a TMD to a complex structure, uh, the idea that is presented here is that consider the TMD applied to a continuous uh, beam structure, for example. Well, the action of the TMD can be represented by a force acting on this continuous system. And so it is possible to reduce the system to an equivalent one degree of freedom system using a single mode approximation as detailed on the video of uh, reduction to single degree of freedom systems. Once this is done, we have an equivalent mass here, an equivalent stiffness and damping and a force acting on the system. And we can just attach the tuned mass damper. The equivalent mass, damping, and stiffness are given by uh, the following equations, where mu i is the modal mass of the mode considered, omega i is the natural frequency of the mode, and xi i is the modal damping. 
psi i is the, the, the mode shapes at position xi, so at the position where the TMD is added. So the equivalent mass, stiffness and damper will uh, depend on the position of the TMD. Once these parameters are known, it is possible to apply the analytical rules given previously to tune the tune mass damper. Let's illustrate the example here. So here we have tuned a tune mass damper at this location here on the beam and we have tuned it to the first mode. We see clearly the effect of the tune mass damper on the first mode with the optimum damping with two peaks uh, with equal um, heights. And you also see that the, the two other resonances at other natural higher natural frequencies are not affected by the TMD. So TMDs have a very uh, narrow band efficiency, they act only on a single mode. Let's have a look now at some practical applications of TMDs in civil engineering applications. So in civil engineering buildings, our high-rise buildings are mostly excited in the horizontal direction and so this video is demonstrating for an horizontal direction what would be the effect of a TMD. So in the first test the TMD here is uh, blocked, it's not allowed to move so there is no effect and the two structures have the same kind of damping. Now the TMD will be released to show the effect of a TMD on the horizontal vibration of a high-rise building. So clearly uh, the damper is very efficient to reduce the levels of vibration. This is now an example of simulation where the uh, building is excited by um, an acceleration given here. So this is the Santa Cruz earthquake we already used. And the building on the left does not have a tune mass damper, while the building on the right has a tune mass damper. So for the first uh, 10 seconds nothing happens because the earthquake has not appeared yet. Here you can see the motion at the top of the building. After 10 seconds it starts to vibrate in the two cases. And then you see that after the passage of the earthquake, you see here the motion of the TMD. After the passage of the earthquake, so about after 20 seconds, you see that the first building continues to sway for a long time, while the vibration is highly reduced for the second building, as demonstrated here on the graph. Other examples of uh, tuned mass dampers in high-rise buildings are the uh, John Hancock Tower, where right? two TMDs of 2,700 kilonewtons, so two steel blocks of 5 by 5 by 1 meter, are installed at the top. Now, tuned mass dampers can also be used to damp vertical vibrations, such as in the case of pedestrian bridges. For example, in the Millennium Bridge, these kinds of vertical dampers are installed uh, below the deck. This is a video of a footbridge which uh, has vibration problems. So when people are walking on this bridge, you see the high levels of vibrations. And by adding a tune mass damper, you see clearly that these vibration levels are reduced. Now the other type of tuned vibration absorber we discussed is pendulum tuned mass dampers, which are also used to damp the vibration in the horizontal uh, direction. So here again the example of two uh, buildings where uh, here the PTMD is blocked, so they have both the same damping when the pendulum is not active. And now the pendulum will be released and you will see clearly that now damping in the system is increased and the vibration decays much faster with the PTMD. So PTMDs uh, consist in a mass hanging uh, from a pendulum and in the case of high-rise buildings there is the famous example of the Taipei uh, 101 building in Taiwan where you see that the pendulum here um, is taking about five floors of the buildings at the top. You also see that uh, this huge steel ball hanging has dampers at the bottom. And the following videos will illustrate the uh, working principle of this PTMD in the Taipei building. 
So this first video illustrates the problem of vibration of the Taipei building due to uh, wind excitation. The threat of tropical storms hangs over Taipei 101. It's not fear of collapse, but a delicate issue of customer comfort. The typhoons that blast through the city of Taipei mean driving rain and 160 km an hour winds slam against Taipei 101, and it feels it. You see, a tall building like this is prone to bend in the wind. Remember the bamboo, flexibility and all that. Now, some flexibility in a tall building is a good thing, that is difficult to avoid, but too much, and it can give the people inside it motion sickness. When I asked the engineers what a typhoon might feel like in a tall building, they said, try eating soup on a bus. So I did. Before Taipei 101 was built, it had to overcome the problem all flexible buildings face, swaying back and forth in high winds. And like any structure, it has a natural frequency. And in this case, one complete cycle of swaying motion from here to here and back again takes about seven seconds. Now, for customers in the restaurant, that would be like sitting on board a bus that every three and a half seconds accelerates and then breaks. And that's the delicate problem I'm talking about. At the top of the Taipei Tower in a typhoon, you wouldn't just spill your soup. You'd probably see your whole lunch again. The building's accelerations or movements can be plotted. This is uncomfortable. The designers of Taipei 101 must slow down the acceleration and deceleration, smoothing the rate of change to avoid motion sickness. But how on earth do you stop a building over half a kilometre high from picking up a nauseating sway in strong winds? This is how the world's largest and heaviest damper, suspended between the 92nd and 87th floors on 16 huge steel cables. Heavier than three jumbo jets, the giant ball will swing like a pendulum. The swinging counteracts the building's sway. The following video shows uh, a close-up on this giant steel ball. When the building sways, it swings like a giant pendulum. It then pushes against oil-filled shock absorbers or dampers that dissipate the sway. I want to check out the damper for myself, so I have permission to go into a construction area underneath it. It feels a bit like caving, except I'm in a tunnel over 80 stories up. Wow! Here it is. The heart of it. Six meters in diameter and made up of 41 separate steel plates. Only now do I get a sense of what a radical and inspired idea it is. Suddenly, now I see it, I understand much better about how it works. This massive ball, this weight, sits here in the middle of the building and as the building starts to move at first the ball resists that movement then it starts to move but that's where these come into play and they're well they're kind of like the shock absorbers on your car only massive and as the ball moves these absorb the energy they soak it up let's now see how type a 101 actually behave under a typhoon on the 3rd of october 2005 Typhoon Long Wang blasts hurricane force winds across Taiwan and presents the damper system with its first serious test. This film shows the ball in action as the 110 km an hour winds blow that day. As it begins to swing, the giant oil filled cylinders take up the energy from 500 tons of swinging steel. This extraordinary footage, filmed on a cell phone, reveals the ball damping 545,000 tons of skyscraper as she sways in the typhoon. After three hours, the winds abate, leaving Taipei 101 to face another day. 
Some of these applications we have just seen about using TMDs in civil engineering are quite impressive as they involve very large masses. Applications also exist in mechanical engineering where masses are usually quite smaller. This video illustrates the use of TMD in machine tools. Where a relatively light counterweight inside the tool absorbs kinetic energy of vibrations and uses a compensating frequency to eliminate them mechanically, rather than converting them into noise and heat. Hence the name silent tools. In this example, vibrations are caught uh, in the pipe due to the, flu the, the fluid and next to it we see the TMD which is not active and so the vibrations of the pipes and we will see now the effect of the TMD when it is released. You see clearly the motion of the TMD while the pipe is now not vibrating much anymore. The next video illustrates how tune mass dampers can be used for uh, space applications. The concept of a tune damper is not new. And what a tune damper does is you take this mass and you tune it to a natural frequency. And that natural frequency is the frequency of a vibration you're trying to suppress. So if you have a structure that has a natural frequency that's shaking, then you can develop a tune damper that's tuned to that fixed frequency and the idea is it transfers the energy to the tune damper device. So then the tune damper vibrates at that natural frequency and reduces the vibration on, this, on the target structure. What makes this unique is the manner in which it performs. We can get an improved efficiency and an improved effectiveness for the same mass and the same size. The reason we developed this was necessity. What we had was a, a launch vehicle model. We were studying ground wind loads for the Ares 1X. And uh, one of the most elusive things to understand about ground wind loads is a concept called vortex shedding, where you have a cylinder and you have flow coming around the cylinder, and it creates then a fluctuating lift that's nearly sinusoidal, meaning that the lift force shakes back and forth at a fixed frequency, where you can damage a launch vehicle, damage the payloads, or uh, affect the guidance navigation systems. And the, the Ares 1X was much skinnier than typical launch vehicles of that height. And when we were building this, this model for the wind tunnel, the damper systems were too fat in order to fit inside of this model to provide the effectiveness that we needed. So everything that we could find off the shelf in previous designs didn't work. And so we wanted a device where we can intentionally off-tune it and then tune it to various levels of effectiveness so that we can control how much damping was in that structure. So that's what this device does. It changed how much inherent structural damping a launch vehicle had to so where it would slow down much faster. I think it has application to almost anything that's dynamic, a relatively fixed frequency, where you can't have a ground-based damper, which can be a helicopter, a grid-tied windmill. Uh, it can be a lot of different structures to where it's more cost-effective, like a, a skyscraper or many civil engineering structures. Uh, now this video shows the active tune mass damper in the floor of an helicopter. This last picture illustrates the use of a TMD in uh, wind turbines. So in this case, um, this is the tune mass damper which acts like a, a pendulum and is intended to damp the vibration in the horizontal direction. Tune mass damper are commonly used in different types of uh, application. The main principle is to attach uh, a secondary system to a main structure which has a natural frequency which is very close to the resonance frequency of the system you would like to uh, damp. The energy is then transferred efficiently from the main system to the subsystem and then dissipated. So as an engineer if you want to design these types of TMDs, you have to understand how to tune uh, correctly the frequency and how to put the right amount of damping to achieve the best efficiency.